I use 3D printers every single day, but I wouldn't call myself a 3D printer enthusiast or evangelist. I print basic parts on the fastest settings with the cheapest filaments, and I always sand and paint my prints. So I was surprised when Creality asked me to review one of their printers. But you know what? I'm genuinely a fan of my Ender 3s, which are made by Creality, so I said yes. And they sent me this absolute show pony of a printer. Now, my Ender 3s are workhorses, and to be honest, I treat them like crap, so I'm curious to see how this printer holds up. This is a review unit, but my thoughts are my own. Let's get into it. Now, this printer does look really good. It's slick and it's quiet. It looks far more at home on your desk than it does in a workshop or a print farm. It has these windows all over it so you can see your print, and it even has a built-in light, which again really adds to that aesthetic. All 3D printers are fairly mesmerizing to watch, but this one really takes it to the next level. Now inside, at first, it seems like there's a fair amount of wasted space in here. But then, if we take a look at this Ender 3, notice how many mechanisms are being hidden. I think this is to make the printer less intimidating to a younger audience, which is supported by some of Creality's marketing. I imagine this would make a great school printer. My only complaint is that it's a bit of a cube. It's really a cube. Now, the setup is really easy. This printer is ready out of the box, so you can just turn it on and start printing from the SD card. It doesn't require the linked app or your Wi-Fi password or anything like that. You can use it without having to download the app or create an account. We will, however, in the future come back and check out those cloud features, but it's nice to know that we don't require them to use the product. Now, before even needing a slicer, you can print some of the files preloaded onto the SD card, but we do need a slicer. You see, the Ceremoon doesn't seem to be that well adopted, so your slicer of choice might not have it as a default option, as it might with Creality's more popular printers. But Creality does provide two slicers as options on their website. So they've got Creality Print and Creality Slicer. The second one seems to be a modified Cura. I started with Creality Print and it wasn't great. I selected the Sir Moon version 1 Pro option and loaded up a model and this is the slice it gave me. Now keep in mind this is with 100% default settings. Look at these huge gaps in the slice and this weird tool path. I messed around with the settings and I just could not get a reliable print from the slicer. I do not recommend it, it's undercooked. The second slicer I used seemed to be a Creality version of Cura. I selected the Sir Moon version 1 Pro and it gave me some default options with the ability to dive deeper into the print settings as Cura does. The default settings worked really well, and it gives you a really good range between speed and quality. The slicer then saves the G-code model to your SD card, which can then be selected from the Sir Moon's touchscreen. Now, before you can print, you may need to level your bed. The printer's UI does have this bed leveling feature, which seems really user-friendly. The printer will move the head to five different positions and allow you to adjust the Z offset for each position, in theory remembering the new position and thus leveling the bed. However, I found that after each print, the printer had forgotten these new positions and had reset the bed, meaning you need to go through the process each time you turned it on, which is fairly time intensive. I ended up manually adjusting the nuts on the bottom of the print bed for a more permanent solution. I assume the new settings aren't being saved to the EEPROM or SD card, and I hope this will be fixed in a future update. Now with the bed leveled, we can chuck in some filament. The printer comes with a small roll of this white filament, which is just enough for this many prints. The sound of the printer has this magnetic swing out arm that holds the filament, which is then fed in here, through this tube, and into the direct drive extruder by pushing down on this latch. The Ceramoon does have a walkthrough of how to do this with an automatic extrusion, which is pretty handy. This was much easier than the pinch action needed by the Ender's Bowden extruder. The printing experience itself is great. With the door closed, it's quiet enough to have running near you without a bother, and the magnetic print bed makes it easy to get prints off. They do include this glue, which I assume is for adhesion, but I found no issues with adhesion. In fact, I had the opposite issue. Sometimes I couldn't even get my prints off the bed. Now, one of the main reasons I took my Ender 3 off my desk was it would actually vibrate my desk when doing small zigzags, whereas the Sir Moon version 1 is very gentle, so I could never really feel it doing any sort of movement or vibration when I was sharing a desk with it. Let's actually do a quick little head-to-head -head between the Sir Moon and Ender 3. I've got this basket that I designed for my ongoing hydroponics project. I printed a lot of these. Let's see which one can print it the fastest with the same filament, same slicer, and the highest quality settings. And it's basically a draw with the Ender 3 being one minute faster. I do, however, find the Sir Moon to be quite slow when using its default settings. However, I do think this relates to it trying to be gentle and user-friendly. If you were to use custom settings in the slicer, you could get it to go a lot faster. While the test was running, I also measured the power consumption of both the Ender 3 and the Sir Moon. 
The Serum Room pulled an average of 85 watts after the heat up process, whereas the Ender 3 pulled an average of 120 watts after the heat up process. This means during the hour and 17 minute print, the Serum Room consumed 108.8 watt hours, whereas the Ender 3 consumed 152 watt hours during its hour and 16 minute print. With my local electricity cost of 3 rand 44 per kilowatt hour, the Sermoon printed the cup for 37 South African cents, or 1.9 American cents, whereas the Ender 3 printed the cup for 52 South African cents, or 2.7 American cents. This means the Sermoon is 29.3% more efficient, even with the additional fans, lights, and camera. Probably because of the smaller bed. Now, there are a few things missing from this printer. I don't like that this printer seems to lack a sleep mode. You can manually turn off the LED, which is nice, but you can't turn off the screen or turn off the hot ends fan, which is on permanently and drawing 8 to 9 watts. This fan isn't loud, but it's not something that you want on all the time. Reaching around back and turning it off every time you're done is pretty annoying, and as we'll see later, this messes with some of the cloud features and it resets the bed calibration. I think a sleep mode would have really done this printer some good. And of course, it could do with a bigger bed. There really is a good amount of seemingly unused space in here. I would have loved to see a bed that matches at least the Ender 3. Now, what really annoyed me is this. If you peek your head in and take a look here, we have this camera. And in the documentation, they mention time lapses and recording. But you can look through the settings all you want. You're not going to find an option to turn it on in the printer's UI. And so this brings us to the Creatly Cloud. This feature is completely locked behind the cloud. And so let us enter the cloud together. Quick rundown of the Creatly Cloud, it's an app and website where you can download free models, pay for premium models, upload models, and of course pay for cloud storage, slice models, control your printer or print farm, and post to a community space. On paper it's awesome, but in practice there's a lot of cracks. Let's start with the time lapses. In order to enable time lapses, you need to create an account on the Creatly Cloud. And then you can link your printer to your Wi-Fi, which is easy enough if you install the app on your phone. And then finally, you can go through the printer settings via the app and click time lapses. If you're fast enough, look at this. If you click settings, you have the record settings on screen for less than a second before it disappears. I assume this is a bug. Maybe they don't want users to have access to it while they're troubleshooting it or something. But if you're quick enough, you can click on it. And then you can enable recording, enable time lapses, and even enable the ability to remove the nozzle from prints, which is really nice. So I've turned it on and printed something. My SD card is a little bit fuller, so there must be a time lapse or recording on it. Nope, it's nowhere to be found. That's okay, the recordings can also be accessed via the Creatly Cloud. Nope, that feature is being debugged. But maybe, just maybe, we can have the time lapse. So we go to print history and each print has a time lapse associated with it. This is a really nice feature. And if we click on the time lapse, we can actually play it. But for some unknown reason, there's no download option. Now this really bugged me. Why did my SD card say it was getting fuller if everything is cloud-based? Why are the files clearly there but not accessible? And then deep on the Sermoon subreddit, someone mentioned that there was a second hidden SD card. So naturally, I took apart my new 3D printer in search of it. And hats off to Creality for making this printer really serviceable and accessible. And of course, they were right. Inside the printer is a second SD card. I felt like I'd found a treasure. And if we check out this SD card, there is a playback file. And within that file, there are video files but they're in an unreadable format and they don't look particularly good when converted. So the moral of the story is at the moment, video recording and time lapses are buggy and unpleasant at best and just unusable at worst. I really hope Creatly addresses this going forward. Now that we've set up the Creatly Cloud, let's actually take a look at what it can do. Now, in my opinion, the most useful thing the Creatly Cloud can do is let you manage your printer over the internet. The built-in camera does have a live feed and the app sends you notifications when your print is done or if there's issues. And I quite like this to be honest. Whenever I leave my Ender 3 running, in the back of my mind I'm always thinking, oh my gosh, my house is probably on fire. And with the amount of dust on my Ender, it's probably not that far-fetched. Now of course I have experimented with things like uh, Octoprint, but I find the Creatly Cloud to be quite easy to set up and quite easy to use. Now the Creatly Cloud also has a model repo where you can not only download STLs, but actually slice them in the cloud. So if you hop around the world, you could find a model you like, slice it, and then start printing it from your phone. Now, both of the slices we talked about earlier will also allow you to upload your slice to the cloud, which can then be sent to your printer. You can also buy premium models with Creality's in-game currency. You can earn these Cura coins by completing daily tasks like signing in daily. Now, this is very reminiscent of a mobile game, but to its credit, it does allow people who design cool things to be rewarded. Now, in the beginning of this video, I mentioned that I thought this would be a great school printer, and I want to build on that. 
I think this is a great easy printer, the kind of printer you'd have on your desk or in your classroom or perhaps give to someone who wants to start printing but isn't ready for a DIY enthusiast type printer. I hope that Creality addresses some of the bugs we saw earlier, and if they do, I'll happily install the updates. But for the time being, my Sir Moon version 1 Pro lives on my desk, in my study, and continues to silently print. In fact, it printed during this recording. Thanks Creality. Cheers.